Okay, for people who are joining this live stream, we are talking about the future of data set, um, and in particular, uh, its user interface. This is actually going to be after we, we're just wrapping up version 12, and this will be for version 12.1, we hope. Um, so, Chris, do you want to do you want to first start off with a demo of what you've done, and then we should dig into the more of the details? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and share. See my screen. Yep. Okay. So, um, last time I showed you rows displayed, columns displayed. <clears throat> Let's take a look again. Let me let me remind okay. what's going on there. So, okay. this is just an option that controls. You know, says display three rows, three rows. And then columns displayed does the same thing with columns. I mean, I think this UX is a little bit confusing by now with, with the pagination UX and the... Yeah, we need to discuss that, and I have... And, and what do we know about what's going on with the cloud, for example? Um, you mean as far as controls go on the cloud? Yeah. I, I haven't... I mean, there are some differences in the code. I haven't attended to those yet. Um, like okay, but I mean, you, you think basically this functionality will work in the cloud? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, including I mean, all the, the sliders. The only, and everything. the only real issue with the cloud is some controls need to be different. But um, you know, as far as um, okay, the scrolling goes, it's the same. Okay, now let me ask another question. In in right now, these are in memory backed data sets. Yep. In the future, we expect that there will be data sets that will load stuff from files and things like this. Okay. Correct? I mean, you know about this or you don't know about this? I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is something we discussed at some point, but it hasn't okay. been implemented. So the, so the database integration folk are sort of involved in that, and I think it would be worth a discussion with them. I mean, that that's basically the back-end plumbing for this. And my expectation would be that like other things where... Um, like audio, for example, you will sometimes get that kind of footer on the UX, on the UI, that says this is not stored inside the notebook. You know, press here to store it inside the notebook. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yep. And I think that's the same kind of thing that we should be doing with data set. Okay. Okay. But anyway, that's okay. So, so keep going here. So that's what are all those... Uh, dashes and X's and things after that. I'll get to that. Those, those are just um, provisional controls for doing sorting and hiding of columns. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. That's just both. And then the frame style option. So you had you had had a frame color option on your agenda, but I changed it to frame oh, no, style. Frame style is better. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you know. Dotted. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um. That's nice, but that's a single frame style. So what would happen right. if I wanted to go at different levels? Right, we need to talk about that, and I have an agenda item for that. Okay. Okay, so this is the new stuff, um, an item display function. So this is a function which is applied to each content item before it's displayed. Um, so, I, I see, so it's a basically, it's like it maps path to display form. Well, so I, what I've implemented is if you just give a function on the right-hand side, it applies globally. Uh, if you give a list of um, pairs with a path and then a function, it applies the path to, it applies a function to paths that match that path pattern. And first match wins. So the earlier things override the later things. Yep. So you can see. So it's you know, like a replacement rule. And it just says, given this path. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because there's sort of a missing function. It's like map at, but well, actually no, replace part would well no. It is it's a re, it's a replace map thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised we've never needed that function now that I think about it. So this is a function which, given oh, I see why we don't usually use it because because usually the thing what's happening here is that. It says at this level do this, but it isn't doing the thing where it says it's not applying a function f inside the expression tree that then affects all subtrees of that tree. It is merely operating at that level. Is that correct? I mean, in other words, if it's, I it's applying to every individual element whose path matches that path pattern. So it's not applying to like branches of trees. It's a trying to. It's only applying to the leaves that have those paths. Mm -hmm. 
So now the next question is why, what about a query string? I mean, could I say, you know, highlight all numbers? I mean, in other words, this is a, I mean, I think what you're doing is right here. I, I think this is not, it's not useful to do the other kind of thing. I do think this would be a, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm wondering whether this is also something that would be relevant to grid and things like that. Um, yeah, well, and yeah, possibly, and yeah, it would give you more flexibility. And, you know, in grid things are more straightforward because you just rows and columns. Yeah, well, what what features does grid have that data set does not have in terms of formatting? Um, background option, alignment, uh, and so forth. I think all those things are easily generalized to data set if we use this uh, notation with, with a path on the left-hand side. I see. I see, because in a grid, it can do essentially, I mean, it has this slightly hard to understand row column mechanism. Yeah. I think this is actually better. I mean, I think this is easier, less obscure, much less obscure actually. And particularly nice is that on the left-hand side there, as you've shown, you can have association keys as well as uh, part numbers, which is something yeah. not relevant to grid as such. Right, and that brings up another issue. So if you hover over something, the annotation shows you 1A, 2A, which is not compatible with um, map indexed. Map index would wrap those things with key. Um, so what I've implemented, you can either have a, a if you have an, a thing that's a non-integer, that's equivalent to that thing naked and that thing wrapped with key. And similarly, if you have key, that's equivalent to that thing or just the argument of key. Well, so wait a minute. Why It'll match you, either one. Why are you telling me this? I mean, so in other words, if you right click there, you can get a copy of the path. Is that right? Yeah. Can you show that? Copy position to clipboard. Okay. But that's, of course, not what's shown in the annotation down, you know, down here. Maybe we should have a thing where we say copy path to keyboard and copy position to keyboard. Or something, some way of, of allowing you to get both of those. Because I can imagine that there are cases where that key thing will be annoying and not worth having. And by the way, in terms of the data set, you don't need those. If those are raw strings, you don't need that to extract that element of the data set. You could use, you know, uh, apply to one comma quotes A, quotes two, quotes A. Right. But the question is, what's that left hand side matching? Is it matching a naked string or is it matching the string matched with, matched, or wrapped with key? I understand. You know, what's what's it going to be fed? And I've just implemented it so it'll match either one. I think that's the right thing to do. I think that's the courtesy thing to do. Because what else could it mean? I mean, in other words, I, there there are cases where you could conceivably have ambiguity, but I think they're few and far. I mean, in other words, if it's a, I think it's okay. Is there in fact ambiguity? Uh, I don't believe so. Unless you have a key that's named key of such and such, which is very which is, you know, one of those quoting the quote things that's never going to work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So but another so, thing so, I can... So my first comment, so my comment here is in that right-click menu or, or whatever mechanism we have, and I don't know what we're doing with right-click on mobile, for example. Um, I don't know. So, I mean, arguably, what happens if you mouse down to that one... I see, if you you moused over that that's where you're moused. And so you don't get to go ask what that is. The only way you have controlling things. So the only way we could do it on mobile would be to have a tongue stick itself out when you mouse over the, th when, when you touch the three to have it bring up, for example, if you hard press the three, it could bring yeah. up some kind of um, uh, menu there. That's probably right. the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. That hard press is the analog of, um, Right click. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Keep going. This is quite beautiful so far. Um, so one thing I considered was that if uh, a shorthand, where if, if if you just emit this trailing um, pattern, that it just matches that branch, the you know the two branch. But I rejected that because. Um, that would mean if you specify if you specify something like this, which is intended to apply to leaves named A, it would also apply higher up in the tree. Yes. 
So I rejected that idea. I mean, it would be kind of nice to have that convenience, but it would be confusing. How nice is it? I don't know how nice it is. I mean, it's... it's well, uh, I would just, you know, it would just mean you would you do this. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. I think it's okay. I think by the time you're, you're controlling this, it's better to have... Exp I, I think it's better to be explicit. I think the mistake probably with grid is that it's too much, you know, too many bizarre sort of telling jokes by numbers type stuff. Oh, yeah. Wait. <laughs> right. Um, okay, let's keep going. Here. All right, so header display function is the same thing, except it applies to the headers. What is a header? So a header is basically keys, right? It's a, it's yeah. a, yeah. Although I think there's a question of whether we should also uh, have headers for uh, array indices, but that's another, that's another agenda item upstairs okay but but so what happens if i want to change the background color of this for example let's say i want to change the background color of a whole um uh i want to change all of the two subtrees background color right so you, you wouldn't do that with a header display function you'd do that with the background option and a path which describes that subtree Where's the what, okay? But but then what about if I wanted to change the color of the background to the word two that sits up there? Did you the same the same color as the two? No no no. I, I'm saying no no no. Just change the color. There's a there's a background there. Yeah, this gray background. Yes. What happens if I want to change that? Um, well, you can't currently. Not with the header display function. No, I understand. Um, but it so it would be background arrow list, and then uh, like dash 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 comma two arrow background color. I don't understand. You could try it. Show me. Well, I don't have that implemented. I don't have a background function, uh, background option implemented yet. Okay. Would, I mean, it would essentially be the same as this except this would be background and this have we done that before color. of having background have have things that have paths in them to do sub backgrounds effectively i don't know if grid allows you to do yeah grid allows you to do that somehow i think i think you can give indices arrow color i believe for grid what well, when we, we we should look that up okay actually hold, hold on just one second i will be right back just a second about that. So what did you find yeah. for, for grid? Well, so here's the, here's the syntax for grid. This is the horizontal, vertical specs, and then a list of rules for individual elements. That's pretty wacky. I mean, um, well, maybe I don't understand uh, what that's doing. Yeah, I don't quite either. Um, is, oh, I, I see it, it, but blue on top of green. So this is for specifying, I think, individual rows. This is for specifying individual columns, and then you can give a list. Oh, of... I see. So if you say green, red, if you you have to need a bigger grid. Just do identity matrix of whatever, or whatever you want. Okay. So now go. Um, I mean, that looks bizarre. That looks like it. So it's a blue, red, blue, come up, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, what happens? And then I think if you do that in another level of braces, it will repeat. This one? Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, clearly in your pattern thing, we could do an even queue. Yeah. Um, okay, so we want some background thing that is m like this, although perhaps we can 
generalize. I, I don't know how we can do this compatibly, but but um, okay. I mean, presum um, presumably the right-hand side, well, in the background option, the right-hand side could be a list of colors, which functions the same way this does with successive items at, items at the left-hand side matches. Understand what I mean? Mm, say that again. So, so for example, if you give uh, a path that specifies a column here, and then you say blue-purple, then it would alternately color them blue, oh, purple, blue, purple. Yeah, it might be nice. I mean, okay. The, one big question is, you know, right now you've got three generations, table form, well, actually four generations, table form, grid, data set formatting, and tab and table view, right? Yeah. What is our strategic idea for what we're going to do to merge those? Like so for table example, view is not documented, right? I mean, it's, no, not, it's not official. It's not, it's not. It's never, it's been there for like nearly 10 years, but it's never been officially. But table view allows editing, doesn't it? Um, I Try it. Know. Try it. Uh -huh. Isn't that magnificent? Uh -huh. I didn't know that. So, I mean, what's interesting about that is we, we need to understand how to merge that idea with data set because having a data set that's editable would be really cool. Yeah. Um, so what other functionality does table view have that would be interesting? I mean, there's this collapse headers thing. What does that do? It just hides the, hides the headers. I never seen that control before. You get, it pops up when you select something. Ah, uh, well, and I don't know whether it, whether it allows, I mean, I think it was supposed to have sorting capability. I mean, this is really very, uh, you know, spreadsheet-like. Yeah. And that was kind of the idea. Um, I don't know what happens if you put a string in there. Try it. I'll try editing. Try it somewhere I else. Can't, no. I can't triple click. Try editing elsewhere. Try editing in another cell. Uh huh. That's why it shows extra cells. What? Well, I wondered why it didn't crop it to the content of the. Much like a spreadsheet. Yeah. Now I'll do input form. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. It tried to be very clever. Oh, well, I recognize that this turned into a number. Mm -hmm. I mean, an interesting question is whether this should be viewed as more like a form field. I mean, I think there's a value to having these things which are, you know, like a spreadsheet, sort of oversubscribed, over, over padded collection. I don't know why table view is never finished. I think there's an argument we should try and finish it. And maybe what we should do is that you can basically say data set of table view and it will convert it to a data set. And the table view should be an arguably like table view of a data set would convert it to this form where you can do editing. Well, except that that doesn't apply generally. I mean, no, I know. Want, yeah. So we just complain if it's not a rectangular. Oh, well, no, we just, we just put the thing in as its raw you know, submatrix into that cell would be my thought. Yeah, they're spanning columns, though. They can be spanning columns. Um, what what kind of sp spanning columns? Where? Um, let me show. Bring up an example. I 
Ben on our live stream is asking, can you delete rows in, in table view? That's a good question. Try it. Um, that was the delete key. Nothing on the menu. Okay, so that's something that is clearly something will be desirable for this. Yeah. I mean, the question is, should we view this kind of input output? I mean, like input field is a different thing from just typing something on in, um, and maybe this should similarly be viewed as different from data set. I'm not sure, but I do think it's time for us to finish this. Um, I mean, I certainly would have used this at a variety of times to just enter, you know, I mean, we have this mechanism for entering a, um, a matrix, but I think this is better. Well, it's probably better. Yeah, there have been many times when I wanted spreadsheet functionality. But how much spreadsheet functionality? Well, I mean, it would be nice to have full spreadsheet functionality with the ability to attach functions to things. Yeah, but then you've got something. So then that's completely different from data set, at least, because then it's basically. Yeah. yeah. OK, all right. What's What, yeah. what are you going to show here? Well, so I, I said that um, data sets sometimes have spanning columns like this one. Is that a spanning column, or is that just something that's missing there? Uh, oh, wait a minute. That so that one may uh, no, it's spanning because it's there's two columns here, and they're joined. These two columns are joined. I don't here. think that's the case. I think what it is is that there is no proof field. There is no proof element for hypothesis. Take no, off. but but in the but in the structure that it built. So what it's building here is actually a grid. I mean, behind the scenes, and in that grid, this is a spanning column. So, if you were going to translate this to a table view, I guess you would have like two empty adjacent empty elements or something. I don't know why you would do that. I mean, because because then what 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 I would see in this case? Uh, no. I, well, it, okay. Uh, it, the question of of two dimensional flattening to go to a table view is an interesting question. I think that's a yet different. I mean, that, that, that's one way to do it is to is to flatten to two D. Another way to do it that is to take the visual thing flatten to two D. Another mm -hmm. possibility would be to take the logical thing flatten to two D, just the top two layers, and everything else is a sub sub array. I see. But let's go back to your main discussion. I mean, okay. Um, so you asked about these controls and the headers. Those are just provisional buttons to do these things. Um, so you can let me see them. Hide, you know, hide columns. I don't yet have that implemented for higher levels, but that should certainly work too. You should be able to collapse this whole thing. But what did I hide there? I didn't hide the two. What well, I don't understand. What am I hiding? So it's hiding this column. It's oh wait a minute. But it isn't. Uh, but I, hmm, that's odd. That must. It, and what would you see I, when, when, if you've hidden well, the what column? I, what I did actually implement is it gives you an ellipsis here, but I don't know why I'm not seeing it here. Sometimes. It gives you an ellipsis and it gives you a minimum width. Minimum width thing. I mean, that's, that's the point is, a min, you know, to take up less screen real estate. These should have changed. I don't know why they're not. Something's out of date. Okay. Okay, show show me right. the other one, the underscore. And then that's that's for sorting right now. It just let me give a better example. Right now it just cycles through um, sorted, reverse sorted, unsorted. And you can do the same thing for keys. Um, I anticipate these things will move right. which way is, is it sorting the keys? And the the horizontal, the vertical keys. Yeah, the so this what, column what? is sorting these elements by this element, this column. Um, no, I get that. But if I wanted to sort the columns, you, you've got that 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 first underscore, the first one there. Yeah, okay, that, that one sorts the keys. Gym, whatever it is. sorts the rows by key. Do it. So then, okay. Now, but what if I wanted to sort the columns by key? You want to sort. You want to rearrange age, height, and weight by the. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there's no provision for that. I mean, it certainly could be a control here that does that. Well, well. in the dot in this header. Why would that make sense? Well, I mean, in this case, it doesn't make sense. I mean, what, so you want to sort the columns by what? Yeah, I mean, you have to sort it by... No, I mean, um, I mean one possibility is, okay, so the, the, the same thing that you're doing for columns, I could do for rows. Yeah. I could support, sort by the gym rows column values, right? I could sort columns by the gym rows yeah. column values. Right. In which case, there would be a sort control here. That's what that would mean. Right. But in the top left-hand corner, there's an ambiguity because there should be two sort controls there, one for vertical and one for horizontal. No, the horizontal depends on the row, right? You get a different, potentially different sort if you sort by dot than if you sort by loo. No, I understand that. But I'm saying you could sort by the keys of the columns. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Just as you're sorting by the keys of the rows. Yeah. Um, except that's not always, uh, I mean, in this case, for example, here, if you click here, what happens to these B and C elements? They don't have, they don't have headers at that level. Right. So you don't sort at that level. So we just sort within the A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then if there were one control here, and the B had sublevels. How do you say sort sort the A's by columns or sort the B's columns? Well, because the the, the control will be one level up. Well, you're saying that, that here you have a control here for these columns. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if you had a control here for these columns, how would it know whether you're intending to sort the A's or the B's columns? What do you mean the A's or B's columns? It could sort one, two, and three in A, or it can sort one, two, and three in B if they were there. They're not in this case, but they could be. I understand. So you were saying if I had, if I, so if I have a horizontal control here, it support, it, it sorts these columns, these, these things by key, right? Yes. If I had an analogous thing here in this position. No, I, I get what you're saying. There's, I don't see how to resolve that immediately. Oh, OK. Um, let's keep going, OK? I, I think I understand. I mean, so there's some questions here, but let's. I just right. want to get the scope. Right. OK, well, that's that's what I have to show what's implemented. OK. And, so, and when, I've done, when, when I've done a sort, what does that mean for the data set? If I do shift enter on that sorted data set, what will happen? Um, well, so, um, go, go it's, back it's, to it's currently just a display thing. It does it on the fly when it's displaying. It doesn't actually sort the original data. Right. So that, that's analogous to a manipulate, where you move the slider and the manipulate. And then the question is, do you get, is that just a surface level change, or does that change the underlying structure? And for, for manipulate, we have this notion of a control that says, paste this. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I can imagine a similar thing here, that most of what you do is purely sort of display level, but that there is a mechanism that says, OK, I'm going to, I want to paste a copy of this that I can then use for the future. Yeah. You sound skeptical. Um, yeah, I I'm, I'm just wondering if that would be confusing. I suppose not. Um... Why would it be confusing? I mean, because that, then you've changed the data set. Yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, the appearance of the data set, which is actually changed, and the one that is just sorted on the fly is, I guess there would be an indicator, a sort of There would be an indicator. Which, which would show the difference, yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's, let's go back to the, um, uh, do you want to go back to the main agenda here? Yeah, yeah. So you want to so, take you over? Not um, you, you not yet. Back to yours? No, okay. no, not yet. What, what things that were in my notes have you not done, or did, were my notes in co Um Well, they were pretty sketchy. Let me. I can pull them up here. Um, SW notes. Let's see. Yeah, I have my annotations. Uh, let's just okay. pull up the original. 
Okay, so um, I'm not sure what that is. So short form, I haven't implemented that, but that's clear. This, this well, there was some discussion last the, time. Not, not obviously a good. No, idea. there was some discussion that about whether we really wanted to do that. That was intended to be show ten rows, right? Mm -hmm. But Tally was suggested that was more. There was a more valuable use for that. Um, notebook level stuff I haven't implemented. Um, so this is not implemented, but it's clear what it means. Pagination, I don't think there's any use for pagination, but we should talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, this is implemented without this data set style options wrapper. Um, this is implemented, yeah. Okay, is, was there anything else on this page? Um, I think these are just now, just kind of random. I don't know what these are, they're just random. That thing's from the, the, the data repository, I think. And, yeah. Okay. Okay. So one of my concerns is, actually, if we get style, uh, if we get um, style sheet options, then, for example, for the data repository shingle pages, we can set um, things to be, uh, um, you know, we can set it so that we will always get five rows or something. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Do you want to give me control back? Okay. Okay. So, by the way, a couple of comments on the live stream here. Ben is suggesting that just doing shift enter on the output. Well, what happens? I should know this, but what happens if you do the following? So let's say I get a manipulate. Um, maybe. Uh, okay, I get this manipulate and I do shift enter. Yeah, it, it does that. Chris, I mean, so in other words, it is burning in the output. Mm hmm the output settings. So if I then say settings of this, setting of that, it'll be that. Right. So that's probably the right, the same behavior that should happen with, um, you know, data set. If you take this output data set and you do shift enter evaluation on it, when it is in the state, you know, the sorted state, so to speak. Yeah. No, I don't know what the, so, the front end plumbing necessary to make that work is. Well, there's two ways we could do that. <clears throat> we could either reorganize the original data or we could have an option which says, you know, sort on this column. So we just set that option. I think, yeah. That, the problem I mean, with doing the option, I mean, no, but the option could then have it be represented with a sort arrow for that column and so on. Yeah. Yeah. But nevertheless, we could have the data set query language understand that option. Is that what you're suggesting? You mean if you index a second element that you get the sort the sorted second element? That's what I'm suggesting, yes. Uh, I suppose it would have to do that, yeah. Um Okay. Seth is suggesting a data set theme which I agree with. I mean, that's a, once we have all these different settings, we can we can invent. I think we should have a data set theme. Um, it's possible that we're going to a point where we should have a general theme option. Um, okay, Ben is asking about preventing long values from truncating when viewing a data set. Yeah, that is a complicated issue. Have you have you had thoughts about that yet? No. But do you imagine? I mean, if I make, uh, you know. Um, and I make this into a data set, I have no idea what it's going to do. It may be a big mess. Yeah, okay, so there's a couple of issues here. I mean, do you imagine that, you know, do you imagine that you're going to do the same thing of it going off the right-hand side of the page or not? And what's um, your... Yes, except that now we also have uh, elision the, the ability to hide columns and the ability. But you've got a horizontal scroll bar. 
So yeah. what's the relationship between the horizontal scroll bar and this and this kind of thing? Well, the way it's currently implemented, the the width of the column is decided independently of the I think the width of the window. So, I mean, it, it, it all it does is change the your window into the the view. It doesn't actually change the like the widths of columns or anything. No, wait, wait a second. So, okay, so there's a couple of things that could happen here. I mean, these columns could wrap. Okay, or and I don't know. I mean, doesn't Grid have a way of doing that with item size? Um, I am not sure. I believe so. I mean, what happens if you wrap that with Grid? Does it? I don't think it does anything useful, but we can try. No, it doesn't. That, that probably does, should do something useful. Um, but I mean, one possibility is you can wrap it. Another possibility is you can have a horizontal scroll bar. And another possibility is what it's doing right now. By horizontal scroll bar, you mean like a local scroll bar? Yeah, like the one that you were showing me. Well, but that's a global one for the whole data set. No, that. But okay. it, I mean that that one. That but it's one, not as global case, as, as the one in the whole window, because here I'm not getting one for yeah. the data set. I'm only getting one for the whole window. Right. You're talking about get like seeing like viewing the entire data set, but if you want to view a truncated individual item. Uh, no, I'm, I'm I saying look, you're suggesting look, individual okay. items would have scroll bars. There's different levels, okay? Yeah. Level one, scroll bar for the whole window. Okay. Level two, scroll bar for the data for the complete data set. Yeah. Level three, scroll bar for that row of the data set. Probably not a good idea. No. That doesn't seem very useful. Fair enough. And um the final level would be you know, forcing wrapping, because I think if I take this, and what happens if I say, make that, you know, partition that, um, ah, let's say in fives, um, and then let me say grid of that. Okay, that's what it does. Yeah. Oops. Okay, so that's another possibility. That was your first possibility, wasn't it? Wrap. Yeah. And now another possibility is allied. I mean, another possibility here is that we could put what amounts to a short here. It wasn't long enough, but let's say short. I don't know whether this works. Does that work? Yes, like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, a thing that we've wanted for a long time is shorts that you can click on to get them to open up. Right. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Ben is, is saying that if he has a, a string in a data set, he'd like to be able to set the truncation to start after some number of characters. So that's effectively like this. I mean, we could, you know, short is a very old function and probably should be modernized. But, um, uh, okay, so I mean, one could imagine some kind of truncation function. One could imagine just wrapping short. Am I making sense? By the way, do I have a place to store stuff about this? Dataset. Oh. It's under data set and SW yes. nuts. Mm -hmm. Q. Um the uh okay. We're getting support on the live stream for the idea of some kind of truncation function or some mechanism like this. But I, I can see this is going to be useful because you want to have, I mean, the best thing would be a specified level of truncation together with clickability to open this out. That will be the that will be the luxury version, in my view. Yeah. So I'm I'm just wondering how is truncation function different than item display function? 
you could consider. I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure it is. It's it's item display function. I suppose you yeah. You might want them to be independent of each other. In what sense? Well, that you could specify. You know, it gets it would get very complex if you essentially have to take the cross product of whatever styling you do with the item display function and the truncation function. Well, unless the truncation is always typically short. Unless the truncation is very straightforward. Yeah. Unless we make a function that is a, a smarter version of short, which we certainly could. So that that's all you're doing. So you just say item display function arrow. So now what are you putting in the item display function again? So it can either be a function which applies to every entry, or it can be a list of path arrow function, which applies to things that match that path. Applies to leaves whose path matches that pattern. OK. Well, so I think that I think that really just says we should make a more sophisticated version of short and put it in the item display function if that's what you want. Yeah. Now, there's a question of what the default should be. OK. Right. And I think the default should have some level of shortification, so to speak, um, because I don't think it's not very useful to have something where it's just way too long. Now, um, you know, should we should we have any kind of wrapping by default? I don't see why we shouldn't. I mean, you could certainly implement this. This is just using grid functionality here. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, grid, I believe, has an item size option. Right. Um, so what's item style compared to what you're talking about? Um, well, presumably it's, I mean, it's not a function. It would be a directive, right? The right hand side. Yeah, I understand. Directive. Also spacings. I mean, I don't know whether you're, how are you covering that? Uh, I haven't addressed that. Okay. Dividers. I don't know whether you can add these things in, but, um, no, uh, I can certainly think about each one. Uh, alignment is another thing. Yeah. By the way, and this is a thing for Sushma. I mean, I why these braces are oversized, I have no idea. It's some mm -hmm. kind of bug associated with the fact that those are hyperlinks inside, I think. Yeah, okay. I'll put that. Okay. I, I do believe that we might as well, you know, we really should support a lot of the styling that's in here. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to pagination and whether there's some value um, to it or not. Let, let me mention one other uh, issue while we're on um, this item display function. So we format um, dates and en entities in a special way within data set. And the question is, if you have an item display function, how does that interact with those defaults? Um, presumably, you want the item display function to be fed the original data. I think so. Right. But then that means if you specify an item display function, you've lost, for example, the special formatting of dates and entities. Uh, so yuck. I'm not quite sure how to address that. Unless, I mean, one possibility would be to provide a data set format, data set form or something. Uh, that does the yeah. formatting as in as, yeah. as it would be in a data set. I don't know yeah. that very much. Um, is there is there a way of checking that the result of the function is a style, and if it's not, then it goes to the default? Um, well, the problem is like let's say you want to make all the elements in a row green. Mm -hmm. um, if you do that, then suddenly your dates will not be formatted as. Yeah, right. So item display function. So the, the problem is we've got to compose these two functions. So you're saying to make everything green, you would do this, right? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And and the issue is humph. And currently, that doesn't even work uh, for, I mean, if you were to wrap that around the formatted entities and dates, they wouldn't turn green because they have explicit colors in them. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just reminded of my fine younger son's characterization when he was younger of bad science education things, which mostly were, and then it turns green and explodes. 
<laughs> the, um, anyway, never mind. The, um, um, okay, so the problem is we've got we've got a default item display function that applies to certain things. We want this item display function to apply to the raw date, not to the dressed date, so yeah. to speak. But then, well, we've got a similar kind of issue with things like base style versus other kinds of styling, don't we? Isn't base style addressing some of the same issues? Base style specifications. Um. Because it's saying, well, I'm not sure if it is. I'm not sure if it is because it, it's trying to give an overlay style humph. I mean, yeah, something, I mean, like, basic, something like data set form would work. I don't really like it. I mean, it's kind of seems kind of hacky. It's hacky. I mean, it would work if you remember to put it in there. Okay. Oh, think, so one idea I had was to provide the uh, the function with the third argument, which is the um, default formatted form. So you would get the raw date, and you would also get the way the data set would format date. That would kind of work, except that currently that that formatted date includes an explicit color, so it wouldn't turn green in this case, unless you go in and unwrap the color, which gets really messy. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's hopeless. I mean, that's hopeless. So that, that will be this. OK, the issue is, OK, for something like graphics, there is a notion of a sequence of directives. And you know, the last one wins, basically. And that's what item style, if it was pure styling, that's what item style would do. What yeah. does what is the formatting of date? What does it actually do? Um, well, I haven't looked at the code, but it just turns it into a string and gives it an explicit gray color. Okay. Maybe, I mean, because there's a lot of other formatting. I mean, look, look, let me give you an example. Okay, so let's say that I say something like, um, it's a good example. There are things which auto format, like, like um, uh, can I do a style around an image? You know, if I have a bunch of images, right? If I say random image, um, what will happen if I, whoops, what do I want to do here? Is that right? Okay, great. So let's say I say that, and I say table of that, comma, five. Okay? They will auto-smallify themselves. Yeah. Right? Now, I would claim that if they had styles wrapped around them, and I don't know whether you can do that in this case, I, yeah, can, yeah, can good question. Around, What's that? You can wrap a style around an image. What does I mean, it do? I mean, well, it probably won't have any effect. Uh, I can't think of anything that would have a visual. A baseline, some, some kind of baseline. Baseline, for example, yeah. So what would happen there? So I would say style there of baseline position arrow random. Well, it doesn't think it's an option there. Um. Uh, that's probably not a style level option. What is it? Uh, an option for typesetting. Specific things like constructs. Row. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so it won't allow me to do this. But I mean, my point is, I can imagine here, and this is something John would have more opinions about. I mean, something where there's a mix in of whatever the auto styling is that causes this to get smaller. Because that's effectively what you're doing here. You're, you're, you're stripping out random gunk that's not needed. I mean, so if I say entity list, um, uh, I don't know, um, elements, I should get random list of chemical elements. Let me say I say, well, let's just say data set of that. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely... Not unreasonable what it did there, but in effect, what that's doing is, you know, that is analogous. That is directly analogous to what's happening here. 
what is the the option that controls that? That is that an option to image? That's some kind of auto display it's, option. Um, image size multipliers, which is an option to what? It's a style level option. Okay, then what I'm claiming is that what we should have is some kind of entity elision. You know, for these things where we allied them, that we should have a style level option that sells, says whether to do the elision. See what I'm saying? What are you calling elision? That you're calling? Well, I'm, this... I'm doing. I'm, I'm the 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 um the the simplification. Okay, yeah. you're removing yellow boxes and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I think this would work. Okay. So so listen to this. So so basically, what we do is we define a style option, which controls the formatting of things like entity. Yeah. Okay. And that style option is by default set in data set. If you don't like it, you can change the, that. So that style option is a mix in to other things. So the fact that it's green. You know, we can decide to what extent the greenness should flow into in through that style option. In the case of a yellow box, greenness would not flow through the yellow box. So yellow. you're saying that the the user would do their formatting, and then the code that handles the special style would take that formatting into account. Uh, uh, what, I mean, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that, this. Look, that doesn't make look, any sense. No, no, no. Imagine image size multipliers. Okay. Yeah. So there is a default setting for image size multipliers in the overall style sheet. That yeah. default setting causes images to get smaller when you put them on a table. Right. Right? OK, so similarly, we can imagine, OK, what triggers image size multipliers? Well, it's triggered by the fact that the thing is seeing itself in a sublist. Right. right? So similarly, I would guess that data set might have. I don't even know what data set does. If I say data set of. Uh, percent 36, what is it going to do? Okay, so it has gone even smaller by some miraculous cleverness of some kind. Right. Okay. So in other words, it is it is using something like image size multipliers, I would think, unless that's a, a, a hard code hack, so to speak. But it could be using... So, okay, what triggers image size multipliers? Answer, you find yourself in a list. Right, okay? it's a context, yeah. Right. So similarly, we can imagine something that is called something like, um, uh, I don't know, you know, simplified formatting styles or something. Bad name. Okay. Uh, uh, let's say, let's say, um, uh, let's let's just imagine minimized formatting style, styles or something. And that and that could be some whole association of all kinds of different things for different types of it could be a list of patterns for different types of things. It's some complicated thing. I don't know exactly what it is. Okay, so what minimized formatting styles would do is it is something that can be set. It might have some bank switched, you know, uh, string names. It's something that is set at it can be set at the style level for the notebook that basically says by default, if you find yourself in an environment. Um, for which, you know, th this is specifying given an environment, what, how should you minimize right. the formatting of, let's say, entity? Yeah. Okay. So, so I think I understand what you're saying, but how would you use that then to make dates format textually, but then turn green uh, because you have an item display function that sets things green? Well, I'm saying that, 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 yeah, right. I'm saying... This is something we obviously have to write. We have to decide how much of the outside world of formatting could seep in to what we have. So, for example, as I was mentioning, in a yellow boxed entity, you don't want it to turn green, I don't think. I mean, our decision, right? Yeah. But in the case of a stringified one, you probably do want to allow it to have the style to seep in. So, so by default, it would set its own color to be some gray, but it would the code would look at the context and say, oh, the color is explicitly set to green, so I'll be green instead. I'm thinking how that would possibly work. Right, but I mean, we have a mechanism for that because obviously there is a base style and then you can have a style on top of the base style, right? That's the, that's the meaning of base style is if nothing else set got set, then use this. Yeah, it's kind of the other way around though. 
I mean, the issue here is that, that the minimized formatting style wants to set the color explicitly to gray, which means if you specify something else, it's not going to have any effect normally, right? Well, wait a minute. If I, if I say, okay, so if I say style of something, so your claim is if I say style of style of thing, comma, gray, comma, green, you claim this is going to be gray, right? That's the fundamental problem you're describing. Yeah. Yep. Well, okay, an alternative to this would be that you could go and monkey with minimized formatting styles. If you don't want gray, if you want something different from gray, wow, I didn't know we did that. If you, um, if you want something different from gray, then you could change the minimized formatting styles for entities, for example. Yeah, but... Presumably, you don't. All you want to do is say, make it green instead of gray. You don't want. To, you don't want to have to mess with all the other formatting that it's doing by default, right? Yeah, I know. I think we should ask John. He might have an idea about this. Okay. Okay. I I don't see how to do this immediately. Uh, ben from the live stream is asking if mouse over would help with dates and entities. I mean, I think mouse over, what does mouse over do here? That just tells us the position. Yeah, what, what is, why has this lost its mouse overness? So if I, if I say um, geo nearest, um, you know, Timbuk2, oops, geo nearest uh, city Timbuk2 5. Wow. Um, and then I say data set of that. Okay, so one thing we've lost here is for this, we have a, a mouse over for the, uh, so we've lost that mouse over, yeah. which is unfortunate. I mean, yeah, look, I, I do think an approach like this is going to be sensible because I think we're going to need to parameterize all these different things that are, you know, specially formatted here. Mm -hmm. um, I want to come back to the pagination function thing. Uh, so your belief is there is no nothing useful at the pagination function? Um, no, because I mean you automatically get pagination behavior if you specify a limited number of rows or columns, then you get the arrows on the end of the scroll bars, which will, you know, advance by pages. Okay, what does gallery view do for? How does gallery view use pagination? All that does is, all right, tells you how many items to display on a page. It, it doesn't really seem relevant to data set. Well, it does for a one dimensional array, it might be relevant. Wait a minute, you're, you're saying when you say rows and columns display function or display rows displayed, columns displayed, by the way, I don't understand why that isn't something that can be at any level. Like you have to say, you know, okay, first question is when you say rows displayed, what does that mean for a one dimensional list that's being wrapped like this? Um, well, in my prototype, it just displays three of those rows with a scroll bar. Okay, so wrap first. So it's display rows, not not rows in the array or, you know, elements in the array. Yeah. Three, three rows of display. Okay. Question though, is if you have a more deeply nested data set, don't you want a count of columns and rows to display at every level? Ooh, what would, I mean, and have a scroll bar for each one? Well, you could need that, couldn't you? I mean, what if I have this? What what if I what if I, for example, say this thing? I mean, I could imagine. Okay, so let, let's let's just do this. Uh, percent forty one. Okay, so percent forty one. Percent. Um, 
percent 38 and then let's say in there association a goes to percent 38 um, B goes to this C goes to percent 41 this may be a horrible mess what I'm going to get out from this and now I make a data set of that actually I'm going to put I'm going to put a brace around here just to make another point. Okay, what on earth is going on here? So this did no elision. You just got three columns. Yeah. And I have no mechanism for specifying elision of that big mess there. And now, now if I say rose display, which I can't do here, what on earth is that going to refer to? It's going to refer to the macro rows here, which is not so useful. I, don't, I think in the current implementation doesn't even affect this case. It only affects... No, I, I understand, because referring yeah. to a macro row, it's not referring to the micro rows that are inside here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Humph. You know, to my mind, you know, at every level... There are, you know, there are rows, there are columns, there are another level of row, etc. Humph. And then there are implicit rows generated by wrapping, like this one here. Yeah. And a further complication is you don't necessarily know if something's going to be a row or a column, depending on how the data set's laid out. But you do know the level in the data set. Yeah. It's fair to assume that you know that. Yeah. Um, and, and just like you could equally well give a path. Yeah. I mean, you could in principle give a path that says, for example, you know, this particular big blob, I only want three rows displayed, but another thing I want five rows displayed. And you could do that with a path. Mm, yeah. Now the question is, what is the relationship between the elision operation and this? In other words, there are, there are, in principle, three levels of elision. One is you don't see anything. You just see a little little indicator um, you know, at the top of the column or something. Second thing is you, um, uh, um, sorry. You, the, the second thing is you, you've seen, OK, you can elide everything away. You can shorten what you have there. Right, with a, an elision marker at the end. Like sometimes data yes, set will display the first five elements of a column and then a, 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 the sixth element is yes, a is, little is, more. Right, right, that's, so that's one form of elision. Another form of elision is elision where you have the scroll bars and things. Yeah. Right, because that's a, okay, so what's the trade-off between elision where it says and 10 more versus elision where you can scroll to get those 10 more? So one of the them is and 10 more, and you click on the 10 more, and it opens up. And the other is all of them are visible. You just scroll through them. Um, well, I mean, they really seem to be duplicate functionality. The only advantage of the first one is you can change the number of things you're displaying interactively. You no, know, I think it's nice. I mean, I think that first one is very visually nice. I think scroll bars are very, very heavy and should be avoided if one can. Yeah. I mean, look, the advantage of a scroll bar, okay, the opener, it's basically like you're closed or you're open. That's it. A scroll bar is like you can scan through the whole list. And I think at any level, a scroll bar could be useful. Um, I need to get going here. Um, that this is clearly, I mean, look, we're making progress. I think the stuff you have is quite good. I think, um, uh, you know, this whole question about elision, we need to think about a bit more systematically. And my feeling is that there really should be two mechanisms for it. One is a short like mechanism that's in the data. Okay. Yeah. And the other is a, um, 
um, uh, a mechanism that is from the control of, um, um, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, from the from the control. Uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to say. Um, uh, is 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 from the uh, options to the data set that you're saying from the outside. I want to take this particular part of the data set and turn it into an opener or a scroller, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. okay, so look, both of those things, both an opener and a scroller, could be achieved by something in the data, I claim. Right, short is the beginnings of an opener type mechanism, although it works slightly differently. But one could imagine um, an elided thing, which was just a wrapper that could apply to any expression that would simply display it as, you know, here's a list and then it's plus dot dot dot, you know, 10 elements with a little clicker on the 10 elements that would allow you to open it out. But when you say in the data, you mean actually in the content of the data set? Well, surely you don't want yeah, that. No, no, I don't want that. Yeah. No, I don't want that. I mean, I mean, uh, okay. I mean, I mean, it would be in the yeah, options to the yeah data yeah set. in the in the options as an overlay in the options saying uh, yeah. yeah that's what that's what I want yes right so it would be some mechanism to to map you would give a path and then the elision mechanism to apply to things in that path or or the branch specified by the path mechanism yes yes right exactly um yeah. Okay, look, I need to go, unfortunately. Um this is this is good. This is nicely under steam. So let's let's some um, uh okay, do you think you can, you know, iterate a little bit more on this design stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And um let's let's pick this up again in a few days and uh try and see if we can nail it down. But I'm I'm glad to see the progress that you're making. Um Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks to folks on the live stream as well. Okay. See y'all. Bye.